All right, so I guess the, the last bit that we're talking about here is just procedures, right? Um, in, in, in so far as like code fragments are concerned, really, when you're discussing programming languages, these are basic um, programming constructs that you get to, to discuss or look at in depth. All right, so procedures, otherwise called functions in certain, certain circles, they're called methods, right? Uh, it's one and the same thing. Um, and nothing more than code fragments that are used to represent a sequence of instructions that are frequently used. Right, so there are usually instances where you get to repeat a sequence of instructions. And so the idea behind procedures is uh, why not factor out that functionality and then just encapsulate it in one unified location. And then you just refer to that code fragment from within the program. Right, um, right and so this, this, uh, this kind of like screen grab on the, on the right here is just uh, showcasing typical examples that you probably are familiar with, right? Um, like if, if you saw, if, if you saw, if it so happens that you find yourself implementing, let's say two branches, uh, almost always the case that you need to gracefully exit the program at the end of the branch itself, the branch label, right? Each of the individual branch labels, right? So you typically have uh, code fragments here for gracefully exiting, specifically li uh, v0 comma uh, 10, and then Cisco. Right, and you notice that the, the code fragments that you need to place in line number 15, in line number 11, and in line number 19 are the same. Right, and so the idea here is to just, uh, you know, just factor these, these common code fragments out and then just uh, have them or place them in one, one location within, within your program itself. And then you just refer to the, um, to the code fragments for exiting in this case. Right, and so the, the question obviously is, but why would you want to bother doing this, right? Um, the, the, obvious, the obvious answer here is you get, to, you get to avoid repetition, right? So you, you end up writing something like this or like that just once, and then you refer to it. And you realize that once you do this, um, it becomes a lot easier for you to avoid errors, because if if there's an error associated with this particular code fragment, you only have to fix one location within your program. Right? Plus, it makes your program more readable as well. Right? Um, and, and, and really, this is, this is so common, even more so now, because uh, I guess computer software has become so very sophisticated, right? And this is probably a very rudimentary example here, but people rarely write programs where you implement um, login functionality from scratch. Why? Because people already did that, so all you have to do is you, re you reuse that uh, particular code fragment. There is no reason why I should, if I'm, if I'm writing an application that is specific to mathematics or to maths, there is absolutely no reason why I should re-implement functionality for computing the square root of a number. People already did that years ago. All I have to do is just reuse that code fragment of functionality, right? Um, just to showcase here using uh, your typical, your typical um, high-level programming language, again, I'm just using Python here. Um, if I'm writing, I don't know if people can see, if I'm writing uh, like again, mass specific function, for instance, all I have to do is tell Python that I want to import a package that has the functions specific to maths. And all I do is I call the functions, like so. <coughs> They're all here, right? Function to compute the ceiling of a number, the cosine for a number, you know, function to compute the factorial for a number, the flow, you know, the square root for a number. So all I have to do is just tell tell this particular programming language to say, you know what, I want to call the function that computes the square root and I want to compute the square root of 100, right? And the, 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 the interesting thing about, um, about procedures or functions for the most part is that you, you rarely need to know the gory details of um, how that particular function was implemented. The only information you need from whoever implemented this function is 
What is the name of the function? How do I use the function? What do I get back when I call the function? So for instance, the square root function, I know the name of the square root function is SQRT, and I know that it takes in one parameter, which is the number that, uh, whose square root I want to compute. I don't care how, well, I haven't bothered, and maybe you should care, but I don't care how it was implemented. And I don't care whether it's 1,000 lines of code. All I care about is that I can use that function and it gives me the result I want, right? Another example is uh, these so-called system calls that we've been using. It's like a black box. Someone just tells you to say, for you to exit, you must load the register, I mean the number 10 into register V0, and then issue Cisco, and then you'll be able to gracefully exit. Someone wrote down the code that does that. It's integrated within Qt Spin, but somebody wrote the code that does that. For you to access or to make use of that particular service, all you need to know is how you use it and what happens when you use it. That's all. Right. Um, so hopefully that, that kind of like provides good enough motivation for why functions are, um, are important or useful, right? You avoid your repetition, your code is more readable, uh, you, you are less likely to run into errors. If there's a change to be made, you only have to make that change once. Imagine a scenario where you have a code fragment with 1,000 lines and then you are maybe, uh, you, you, you have um, code fragments that adds numbers, right? And you realize, say, oh, my implementation of adding two numbers is wrong. Uh, and so happens that the adding of numbers is done, maybe you, you have it in 10, 10 different places in that particular source code. What you'd have to do is you make changes 10 times but if you use procedures, it's just one place because you'd have factored the functionality of that particular, uh, or you'd have factored the functionality of the program by making use of a procedure. Okay, so in terms of how these things work in, in MIPS, uh, pretty easy really. Um, so the first thing you need to do, right, for you to implement a procedure in MIPS is you must define the procedure. When you specify, you give it a name, obviously definition involves you giving it a name. Why does it need a name? Because for you to make reference to the procedure, you need to use the name, right? So you give it a name by using, lo and behold, the label, right? So this is a user-defined name, it could be anything, it could be X, it could be Y. Um, always a good idea to use more descriptive names, right? Um, and then, uh, obviously, after the label, you have the Full colon, the usual drill, a label is always followed by a full colon. Um, and then you come up with implementation of that particular method. And then, by convention, or at least it's the rules, not the conventions really, the other rules anyway, you must have uh, this particular instruction at the end of the procedure itself. Right, so jump register and then you have dollar sign RA. Um, RA happens to be RA happens to be register number 31 for those that care, right? Uh, you'll find it here. Here, right? Um, this is register number 31. Yes, sir? Yeah, so J JR is just a uh, jump to register RA. It's just jump register RA. Sorry? Sorry? No, oh, 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 I'm going to describe just now. What, what's happening behind the scenes is uh, the way Jump and Nick works actually is that you, you, um, once the CPU comes across Jump and Link, the first thing it does is it, it copies the next instruction to be executed into the register RA or register 31. Right, so what you're doing when you have JRA is essentially you're saying wherever you have a, a procedure, a procedure, right, uh, and you have a, a, a return address here, um, and you have this, what you're telling, what the CPU will do is you just say, oh, this guy wants me to go to RA, but RA is the next instruction to execute. And so effectively what you're doing is 
you are going to the next instruction that follows the definition of the procedure. Right. So it's just, this is what's happening here. Need to replace my batteries here, I guess. I don't know if you them too far away. Okay, so this is what I was saying. So what Jump and Link does essentially, uh, JAL, is uh, it copies the address of the next instruction into the register RA, right, and then jumps to the label. So it goes to the label. So it's like Jump and Link. So jump to the label and then uh, copy the contents of the next instruction to be executed into RA. And we know where the next instruction, the address of the next instruction is coming from. PC, program counter, yes. Information overload. Uh, the idea makes, <coughs> well, I was trying to keep, keep up with what you were saying. What you're saying does make sense, but I think it would make even more sense if we actually saw the actual implementation of what you're saying. But ideally, yeah. So, for, so I was able to pick out one thing, one key thing from what you just said. The fact that, um, the fact that you are, you're implementing a procedure to print, that's what you're doing, so yes. So you're saying within that loop, you, you essentially issue jump and link, and then you link to the procedure that prints the number. Yeah, that would work because once you see jump and link, you will go to the definition of the procedure. Once you execute the procedure, effectively printing, you execute the next instruction that follows the jump and link statement or instruction. Yeah. Okay, so it's quite important really here, is, and, and I hope you're keeping your try your you remember the things we've discussed in the past. The next instruction to execute, program counter, right? 